So before he was picked up to work with Akira Toriyama and create the official manga for Dragon Ball Super, Toyotaro authored Goku's third son, Zykor. This is one of my favorite Dragon Ball stories and I'm excited that I get to share it with you guys today. Before we go any further though, we have to address the question of how could Goku have a third son? Goku isn't exactly the kind of guy to have multiple wives, so where did this third son come from? Well, the story starts right after Goku defeats Frieza and the original planet Namek explodes. Broken and beaten, Frieza is found in space by King Cole and what remains of the Frieza Force. How could this be? Says King Cole. It hurts. Mama. Papa. When I first read this, I thought Frieza may have been hallucinating. Obviously, King Cole is his dad, so him saying Papa makes sense. But Mama, we have absolutely no idea who Frieza's mother is. Until now. It turns out that the woman standing next to King Cole is the West Kai and is also Frieza's mother. And and she is as ruthless as they come. She says, I no longer need a son who isn't the best in the universe. She then says, the Saiyan who brought down Frieza that far, named Son Goku, what kind of man is he? I want to know, he will become my key to universal conquest. I must contact him before Cole and the others do. And if it still isn't clear yet, how this ties in to Zykor, Goku's third son. Let's just put it like this. This Kai, the West Kai, Frieza's mom, has a bone to pick with the universe, and she wants the strongest in the universe on her side. But rather than just go in and trying to find the strongest warrior and recruit them, what she does, because she's a god, a Kai, she tries to find the strongest warrior and combine their DNA with her DNA to create an even stronger godly being. At first, she thought the strongest warrior in the universe was King Cole, and that's how Frieza came into existence. Now, she thinks that strong warrior is Goku. So to put it bluntly, she's trying to make a baby with Goku. Hurry up and get my ship. I'm leaving immediately. Certainly, Leela-sama. So her name is Leela. And now, several decades time has passed. A crisis unlike any other before it is drawing near to a now peaceful earth. Zykor is coming. Before we continue, I just want to quickly tell you guys about the Yamoshi book. The Yamoshi book is a fully illustrated book created from a story here on my channel about Yamoshi, the original Super Saiyan. A lot of people sell merch here on YouTube and I didn't want to just do the same thing so I worked with an illustrator to create this beautiful 39 page book to immortalize the story. We put together a short trailer and I'll play it now. There is an Amazon link in the description if you want to grab yourself a copy of the book. Also in this video, there is a secret message. The first person to find it and comment in the comments below wins themselves a copy of the book. The message will be displayed on four frames that will appear randomly throughout the video. The first one is on your screen right now. It's the number one. Anyway, that's it. Let's continue with the video. So this story takes place after the events of Dragon Ball GT. It says up until now, Son Goku and the other warriors of Earth have saved the planet from the attacks of Cell, Majin Buu, and numerous others. Even after the Earth was threatened countless times, Goku and the others came to save the world by growing stronger each time. And we can see the GT villains in the back, Omega Shenron, Super 17, Baby. And so Goku's role finally came to an end and he vanished from the living world. So here it's talking about at the end of GT, when Goku leaves with Shenron, flying on top of Shenron's back. It says the Earth was deprived of both Goku and the Dragon Balls. However, the world had obtained peace in return. On the next page, we get to see what life is like now on Earth without Goku. This is Hercule City, and we're taken to Orange Star University, where Gohan is a professor. He's teaching a class, and in that very class is his brother, Goten. Goten isn't paying attention to Gohan, lecture he's instead talking to his friends they're talking about apparently a spaceship landed on earth and they want to go check it out after school at the same time an emergency broadcast comes over the school's PA system apparently a robbery has taken place not too far from where they are and Gohan tells Goten to go check it out 
Goten says he's busy. Gohan says, if you don't go, I'm going to cut your allowance. Because obviously now Gohan is the man of the house with Goku gone. And then eventually Goten decides to go. I thought this was a little weird when I first saw it because they were in the middle of school. But on the very next page, we saw why Gohan asked Goten to go. It's because Goten has now picked up the mantle of Saiyaman. He's apparently great Saiyaman number three. So he changes into his costume and flies off to stop the robbery. Before Goten could do anything though, the hero Papaya Man shows up and stops the criminals dead in their tracks. By the way, Papaya Man is just oob in a costume of his own. Feeling a bit depressed, Goten starts to fly away. And at the same time, this is where things start to really pick up. We see two Saiyan ships land not too far from where Goten is. In the first panel, we see Leela. She's standing next to someone who says, So this is Earth. Where father's from? Leela responds by saying, Yes, it is. The time to fulfill our parent-child ambitions has finally come. Then we get a full panel revealing who the person next to Leela is. He laughs and says, I, Zykor, am the heir to my father's son Goku, the mightiest in the universe. Right away, Zykor senses someone. It's Goten, flying back from his little mission. We've already found you, said Leela. Son Goten. Zyko uses what appears to be instant transmission to appear right in front of Goten. He says, are you Son Goten? Goten is shocked. And then Zyko says one word, die, and hits him with a key blast point blank. Immediately, Gohan senses something is wrong. He says, Goten, what is the deal with this ridiculously large key? The entire nearby city begins to shake from that one point blank blast that Zykor hit Goten with. Then on the next panel, we see the result of the explosion after Zykor's key blast. Goten is immediately defeated on the verge of death. Right away though, Leela and Zykor send someone else. Someone's coming, they said. Gohan is already there. Goten, he says. Good, it's son Gohan says Leela. Are you okay? says Gohan. Big bro, Gohan is pissed. Was it you who did this? Who are you? So your son Gohan, says Zykor. Why do you have such pathetic energy? I'm asking you, who are you? says Gohan. Me? Why I'm your little brother, Zykor responds. What? Little brother? Who are you trying to fool? Listen up. The only little brother I have is Goten, here. Zykor laughs. He then says, you two do indeed have a strain of these pathetic earthlings in your blood, don't you? Gohan-san. Gohan turns around. Trunks and Vegeta just arrived. Even more of them, huh? Saiyans, that is, says Zykor. So he's the one who beat Goten, said Vegeta. Yes, respond Gohan. What does this all mean? Zykor says, I have the ultimate body that possesses the genes of both the strongest warrior and the deity in the universe. I am Zykor. The strongest warrior, deity, what are you talking about, says Gohan. Leela then instant transmissions between Gohan and Vegeta and says, allow me to explain. She says, Saiko's father is son Goku, the same as yours, but it's only your mothers that are different. I, a goddess, am his mother. What? Respond Gohan. You expect us to believe that? Leela then teleports back to Zykor's side. Instantaneous movement, says Gohan. You're both speaking gibberish, says Vegeta. What's your objective? What did you come to Earth for? As usual, Vegeta is all business. Objective? That's simple, responds Zykor. I am the heir to Son Goku, who boasted the most power in the entire universe. I will rule the universe in my father's stead. It won't be any of you. Gohan responds, hey, you've made some sort of mistake. Father was strong, but he doesn't rule the universe, and we don't plan on ruling either. Layla responds, such barefaced lies. I think this panel is really interesting because it shows that Layla is lying to Zykor. Obviously, Gohan is telling the truth. Goku does not care about ruling anything. So Layla may have sold Zykor some sort of message to make him believe that Goku is something that he's not. And if that's the case, it opens up the possibility that Zykor actually thinks that he's doing the right thing. Meaning he may not just be your typical villain. He might believe that he's the good guy while Goku and Gohan and such are all the bad guys. Leela follows up by saying, Zykor, don't be swayed by them. Kill them and you'll become ruler of the universe. Gohan then says, whatever the case, get lost. You guys don't belong here. Zykor then smirks, charges a key blast, 
and then completely destroy all of Hercule City. But that's not all. In the next panel, we get to see that Zykor didn't just target Hercule City, he destroys an entire chunk of the surface of Earth, instantly wiping out what is likely millions of innocent lives. What are you doing, Yell Gohan? Is it important? Responds Zykor. The Earth, which you spend your time with father, with that is? Why you? Gohan is even more pissed at this point. Zykor sees this and says, I'm going to make you all disappear, both you and this planet. This is where Vegeta steps forward and says, hey, I've been listening to you for a while about who's the strongest in the universe. You better listen up. I'm going to teach you who's really the strongest warrior in the universe right now. And instantly, Vegeta transforms to Super Saiyan 4. Let me just say here that this is already pretty impressive because remember, at the end of GT, in order to go to Super Saiyan 4, Vegeta needed that machine, that Boma build. But now he's able to do it off of willpower alone. Vegeta then charges Zykor. Wait, Vegeta-san, says Gohan. Uh-oh, so you're a Vegeta, are you? Vegeta tries to connect the punch, which Zykor blocks with his forearm. Vegeta then tries to connect the kick. Zykor grabs his leg and punches him in the stomach. That one punch seemed unbearable, even to Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. Whoa there, says Zykor. You're this bad with just a single punch? Your royal blood weeps, Vegeta. Father, yells Trunks. Damn it, says Gohan. Gohan, son, I will join you. Trunks, you take Goten and get out of here. Zykor then kicks Vegeta high up into the sky. He instant transmission above him with a giant key blast in hand. May the entire earth be gone, Vegeta. Not good, yells Gohan. And then for the first time we see it. Gohan powers up, revealing a tail, and transforms into Super Saiyan 4. He then fires a Kamehameha at the key ball, heading directly to earth. He manages to knock that ball away, which for the moment saves Vegeta, and the entire planet. Even Gohan-san turned into a Super Saiyan 4, said Trunks. Zykor then teleports above Vegeta and begins to stomp his head into the dirt. Hurry up and come at me, son Gohan. Or do you plan on watching from there until this one dies? You bastard. Right when Gohan is getting ready to charge Zykor, Trunks pushes up from behind. Trunks, yelled Gohan. Zykor dodges Trunks' attack and hits him in the back. Stop, you dummy, yells Gohan. Then instantly, Zykor is in front of Trunks. You're a Saiyan too? If you are, you're pathetic. You're too weak. Make haste and be gone. And this is where Gohan enters the fight. For the first time, we see Zykor take a bit of damage. When Gohan's punch manages to connect, Zykor instantly regains control and begins to smile while dodging and blocking Gohan's attacks. He then knocks Gohan away with an uppercut and says, so you finally feel like fighting, do you, son Gohan? Come get some. I'm going to kill you. Both Gohan and Zykor begin powering up. And this is a pretty impressive panel. Zykor says, let me tell you right now that I'm not here to enjoy a battle. I won't be pulling any punches. Off to the side, Leela is incredibly happy. She laughs and says, this is perfect. Then we are taken to the realm of the Kaioshin, where Kabito Shin is watching all the events unfold through a crystal ball. He says, is that Wes Kaio shit? He runs over the old Kai who's currently training Tapion and informs him of the situation. Old Kai is surprised. He says, weren't all the other Kaio Shins except for you killed by Majin Buu? Kabito Shin confirms that Wes Kai should have been killed by Majin Buu. And it's not yet clear how she managed to survive. Don't worry though, that gets explained in great detail later on in the story, and it's pretty messed up. Anyway, let's keep going. Back on Earth, Zykor is dominating Gohan. Trunks suggests that Vegeta and Gohan confuse, and Vegeta says, that won't work. This guy is far more powerful than even that. Back to the fight, Gohan is getting close to his limits. He says to himself, the difference in our level is so huge. This is bad. I don't have a chance. I can't protect the earth. What should I do? Please tell me. Father. After this inner monologue from Gohan, we flash to hell, and the guards at hell receive a call from the Kaioshin asking if Goku is there. Goku isn't there, but Piccolo is, and he is locked in a fight with both Frieza and Cell. After confirming that Goku was not in hell, the old Kai finally figures out where he is. Apparently, Goku went to an area far above the skies 
of the realm of Kaioshin. It's neither of this world or the next world. The old Kai says this is a world whose very existence has gone forgotten. Then we get to see Paikon, Goku's old training buddy from the other world. He says, still can't believe you chose me to come to this world. Then a voice says, well either way, I'm grateful to have myself a training partner. Then we get a close up of the man himself. Goku in his adult body says, come on, let's do more sparring. For crying out loud, just how strong do you have to get until you're satisfied, said Paikon. Goku and Paikon are training in a place far above the skies of even the realm of Kaioshin. During their training, Paikon finally manages to get the jump on Goku, when suddenly, Goku flashes for a brief moment, giving Paikon a taste of his new power and transformation. Sorry, says Goku, that was a mistake. If you change into that form every time it looks like you'll lose, I'll never be able to win, respond Paikon. We then flash to the planet of the Grand Kaioshin, a place in the other world where Goku used to train. The Grand Kaioshin is on the phone with the old Kai, who is still searching around, trying to find a means to contact Goku. The Grand Kai says, I don't know where they went. I'm positive they flew off with some weird dragon. He went with Paikon. Remember that this is after the events of Dragon Ball GT when Goku flies off with Shenron at the end of the series. After hearing this from the Grand Kai, the old Kai says that he's now convinced he knows exactly where Goku is. Back over to Kabito Kai, he is still monitoring the events between Zykor and Super Saiyan 4 Gohan on planet Earth. He says, it seems the time has finally come for me to fight. The old Kai warns him and says, wait, what are you doing? You can't lightly get involved in the problems of the lower world. It won't be much longer until Goku is found. Kabito Kai responds by saying, no, without a doubt, she is the Western Kaioshin, which means that this is a problem that I must solve. He then teleports to Earth, right to the center of the action, behind Leela, who is only a few feet away from Zykor and Gohan. You're the East Kaioshin, aren't you? So you finally show yourself, said Leela. West Kaioshin, you were supposed to have died by being killed by Majin Buu five million years ago. So then why are you in the world of the living, said Kabito Kai. Supposed to have died? Don't patronize me. I wasn't killed at all, respond Leela. Be it true that I was driven to the brink of death back then. I survived. Even after the planet exploded, I drifted about the vacuum of space for millions of years, but no one ever appeared to rescue me. Okay, holy crap. After reading this, it makes sense to me why she's so bitter. How could you drift about in space for millions of years? I really don't know how this could have happened though because the Kais all know instant teleportation. We just saw Kabito Kai use it a second ago to get to Earth. So even if the logic is at first she was too beaten up and didn't have the key to use teleportation, you wanna tell me it took millions of years for her to heal and her key to return? I mean, that's really strange to me. Maybe there's stuff about the Kais that we don't fully understand, but still suffering like that for millions of years, I can easily see how that'll turn the nicest person bitter. She continues by saying, meanwhile, you were in the realm of the Kaioshin, living comfortably. Kabito says, this, this can't be. I had no idea. Lila responds, I was in agony. Why would a Kaioshin, one who is supposed to stand at the top of the universe, have to suffer such disgrace? And then I realized that power accounts for everything. Nothing could be done without power. Overwhelming power. Power is essential for he who shall stand at the top of the entire universe. They must boast the power of the best in the entire universe. Kaioshins who are supposed to be the apex of the whole universe, not having the power of the best in the whole universe, don't you think that's a contradiction? Then what have you been doing up until now? Asked Kabito Kai. Leela responds with, I've been lying in my sights for a chance to conquer the whole universe. Frieza was a failure, but this time I've successfully created the ultimate warrior. Come now, Zykor. What are you doing? Hurry up and kill them. Okay then, responds Zykor. Are you about ready to die, Sun Gohan? Zykor raises his hand to the sky, creating a key blast. At the same time, Kabito Kai teleports behind him. With his sword in hand, he takes a slash at Zykor. Zykor dodges, but he was definitely very startled by Kabito. Kabito then teleports a weakened Gohan some distance away. He instantly heals Gohan and then says, Thank goodness I made it just in time. 
Gohan san, I have a request for you. As soon as Zykor locates them, Leela lands behind him. Zykor, she says. That fellow is the East Kaioshin. The East Kaioshin, responds Zykor. He's a most detestable existence. Disperse every single last trace of it. I get it, said Zykor. Back to Kabito Kai and Gohan. Gohan says, did you just say fight with Zaiko one more time? Kabito responds with, I did. Gohan responds by saying, Kaioshin-sama, you did go through the effort to bring me back, but we're far too mismatched on terms of ability. I'm sad to say it, but even if I fought him any longer, Kabito responds by interrupting Gohan and showing him his sword. Gohan-san, he said, you will not have to win. All you have to do is draw his attention for a little bit. That's the Z-sword, said Gohan. Yes, I restored it, said Kabito Kai. I will catch him while he's off guard and seal Zykor in the Z-sword. Seal, said Gohan. At the same time, Zykor attacks. Brought back by the Kaioshin, were you? Even if you were, it's useless. I'm going to eliminate the lot of you in an instant. Remember my request, Gohan-san. I understand. I will try, said Gohan. Gohan transforms back into Super Saiyan 4 and continues his fight with Zykor. He manages to deflect one of Zykor's attack and toss him high into the sky. Full power, he yells as he charges up an attack. Have you lost it, son Gohan? If you fire that from there, the earth will suffer the consequences, said Zykor with a smirk on his face. Da, said Gohan, as he fired a barrage of key blasts at Zykor. For a moment, we can hear Gohan's thoughts, and he's thinking, the earth's damage can be restored by the planet Namek's Purunga. Right now, my first priority is to stop Zykor from moving. Obviously, Purunga is the dragon that is summoned when the Namekian Dragon Balls are used. Gohan's attacks are so powerful that in a nearby city, Papaya Man, aka Oob, is working overtime to try and save the citizens from buildings toppling over. Gohan stops his attack and the dust begins to clear. For the most part, Zykor seems unscathed, but he does seem very annoyed. You really got carried away, he says. A short distance behind Zykor, Kabito Shin plunges the Z-Sword into the ground and begins the sealing ritual. But Zykor is moving too fast for Kabito to pinpoint. At this moment, Vegeta jumps up yelling, get out of the way, Gohan, and charges a final flash. Gohan barely manages to dodge as the attack hits Zykor point blank. Trunks also adds to the attack with his buster cannon, and then Gohan adds a massive Kamehameha, making it a three on one attack. Even Zykor is being pushed back by this powerful combination. Father, please give me the power from back then, says Gohan. The same power that defeated Cell. Oddly enough, it's almost as if Goku could sense Gohan's thoughts. In his world far away, Goku stands up and looks to the sky. Did something happen? Asked Paikon. No, it's nothing, said Goku. Give him everything you've got, said Vegeta. Then we get this beautiful panel of the three Saiyans going all out. But still, somehow, Zykor is able to deflect the attack. Gohan, Trunks, and Vegeta are shocked, and Zykor, although a bit fatigued, is pissed. He said, you half-dead fools are coming in twos and threes, there will be no more miracles for you. And with that, both Trunks and Vegeta fall from the sky. They collapse from exhaustion, having reached their limits. So then, who shall I wipe out first, says Zykor. In that moment, however, he drops his guard, giving Kabito Kai an opportunity. I've got you now, says Kabito. He then fires the sealing technique at Zykor, hitting him point blank. What? This is sleep forever within this sword, said Kabito. This is bad, said Leela. Then, at the last second, as Kabito Shin is dragging Zykor to the sword with his technique, Lila fires an attack, knocking the sword from the ground. The smoke clears to reveal that they were unsuccessful in sealing Zykor. What was that just now? Said Zykor. Gohan and Vegeta are shocked. Kabito is completely defeated. He says, damn it, my one chance. Gohan, I'm sorry, said Kabito Shin. He then collapses from exhaustion. Apparently, the sealing technique took pretty much all of his energy. It seems he used up all his power, said Lila. He tried to seal me within this sword, said Zykor, reaching to grab the Z-sword. However, before Zykor could get to it, Gohan grabs the Z-sword. Beaten and battered with the Z-sword, he assumes an attack position, ready for his final stance against Zykor. You still have that much power left. 
That sword is only useful with the technique from before, said Zykor to Gohan. With his last bit of energy, Gohan raises the Z-Sword above his head. It looks like a pointless failure of a final attack, when suddenly, Gohan smiles. At the same moment, Zykor is attacked from behind. Gohan bought enough time for Kabito Kai to get back on his feet and hit Zykor with a second attempt of the sealant technique. I thought you used all your power, said Zykor to Kabito. On the panel below, we got to see how Kabito was able to recover so quickly. It was thanks to Dende, the guardian of Earth. During Gohan's distraction, Dende arrived to the battlefield and managed to restore Kabito Kai's strength. Gohan-san, bring the sword down just like that, said Kabito to Gohan. And in case you forgot, the sword in Gohan's hands is the Z-Sword, the same sword he trained with in Dragon Ball Z, it weighs many, many tons. So in a final effort with all his remaining strength, Gohan raises the sword above his head and makes a powerful swing at Zykor. Again, Layla, Zykor's mom, tries to stop this attack, but this time, she's too late. The sword hits the ground, creating a powerful shockwave of dust and rock. As it all settles, Zykor is gone. They did it. In the same way Beerus was able to seal the old Kai into the Z-Sword. Through the efforts of Gohan, Vegeta, Trunks, Dinde, and of course the Kabito Kai, Zykor was now sealed within the same sword. They pulled it off, said Vegeta. It's over, says Gohan. Suddenly, however, Kabito Kai is attacked by Layla. You can only imagine how furious she is. She looks down on Kabito and says, Scum. She then grabs Dende by the neck and says, Button in when you're merely the god of Earth. She throws Dende aside and then looks at the Z-Sword and says, With this grade of seal, I'll soon undo it. Gohan, you must defeat her, says Kabito Kai. She's the cause, the cause of all of this. What are you doing, Prince of All Saiyans? Even though he's severely wounded, Vegeta has beaten Gohan to defend in the sword. Damn it, he says. I want this to be the last time I fight for Earth's sake. Fight with me, says Layla. Vegeta attacks. Layla is able to quickly instant transmission away. Listen, Saiyan. I'm a god. I can read your mind. Not to mention that beat up as you are, your attacks are like nothing. It's a hundred thousand years too early for you to try killing me. After putting his all into attacking Zykor, Vegeta simply could not keep up with Layla's ability to read his mind and her instant transmission. After noticing this, Kabito Kai points out that Layla is now a serious threat. The only people who can kill her are either demons or those with the same abilities, he says, which leaves only me. Kabito uses his instant transmission and teleports behind Layla, grabbing her. What could you possibly do, says Layla, talking to Kabito Kai. You've always been so powerless. As a Kaioshin, I cannot allow you to get away with this, says Kabito. I'll see to it that you atone for your deeds with your death. Don't tell me you're going to self-destruct. Gohan-san, Vegeta-san, I'll leave the rest to you. And with that, Kabito teleports himself and Layla to a distant planet. Stop it, Shin. Kaioshins aren't allowed to self-destruct. I never thought I'd hear that from you, as evil as you've become. Farewell, Layla, my sister. And with that, Kabito sacrifices himself. Even Piccolo in hell could feel the remnants of a god self-destructed. Someone else also sensed it. Even I just felt that just now, says Paikan on the next panel. Kabito sacrificing himself made it clear to Goku that something extremely dangerous was happening. He says, that thing just now wasn't on Earth. It was someplace closer to where we are. I'll tell you what it was, said a mysterious figure. In the next panel, this figure is revealed to be Si Zing Long. He says, Kaioshin is dead. Kaioshin Sama, Dead? Goku and Paikan are shocked. Before we go any further though, who exactly is Si Zing Long? And why is he here in this place where Goku and Paikan are training? Well, the first thing to remember is that this is all taking place after the events of Dragon Ball GT when Goku flies off with Shenron. Si Zinlong is one of the dragons born from the negative energy of the wishes made on the Dragon Balls. Specifically, he comes from the wish to restore King Piccolo's youth. Back on Earth, 
Gohan is really upset by the loss of Kabito Kai. Vegeta says to him, the Kai took personal responsibility for his mistakes. Try to understand, Gohan. I really like this scene because it shows that Vegeta has developed a new respect for Gohan. It's almost as if he's trying to comfort his comrade, his friend. On the panel below, we get a view of this scene from behind where the Z-Sword sticks out of the ground. It's only a few yards away. Suddenly, there's a crack. Zykor is breaking free. Gohan and Vegeta notice right away. And then there is a voice. Hey, son Gohan. The voice is the old Kai, and he's communicating telepathically with Gohan and Vegeta. He says, seems that seal has failed somehow. That seal will only last another month. When it breaks, that guy will come out again. What should we do, asks Gohan. Well, asking that won't really help. There's nothing we can do. So you're saying that in one month, we have to surpass him, says Vegeta, with a new look of resolve on his face. The old Kai then says, so much power couldn't be sealed away by just a single Kaioshin. Or did Kabito just do a poor job? I'm sorry, said Kabito, appearing next to the old Kai. His arrival startles everyone. The old Kai says, why the heck are you here? There really isn't anywhere else for me to go, said Kabito. And you tried to make yourself look so cool, said the old Kai. This is really interesting because obviously the Kais are gods. And the rules around what exactly happens when Kais or gods die have never really been explained in the Dragon Ball universe. We got a little bit more information in Dragon Ball Super about what may happen. For example, in some timeline, we know that Zamasu managed to kill Gowasu, his mentor Kai, but we really don't know what happened to Gowasu's soul after that. Like, did he go to heaven, hell, does he have a halo now, or was he just completely erased? Some of you guys might be thinking that if Kabito Kai died, shouldn't Beerus also die? And again, keep in mind that this is all after Dragon Ball GT, so it's not clear yet if Beerus exists in this world or not. But even if he did, his life is connected to all the Kais of that universe, so since the old Kai was still Still alive, Beerus would be fine. All right, so let's continue the story. Mr. Popo shows up to rescue Dende, who is unconscious from Layla's attack. Gohan grabs Goten, who is also still unconscious. But before grabbing trunks and flying off, Vegeta had a question for Gohan. He said, first off, just who was that bastard? I thought you two were Kakarot's only sons. Gohan respond by saying, I don't really know myself, but a long time ago, father told me this story. I know some of you guys have been waiting for this, so this is where Zykor's origin gets explained. There's a flashback not too long after Goku returns from Planet Yardrat, and he is giving young Gohan a bath. Gohan asks him, hey father, were you on Planet Yardrat this whole year? Goku responds and says, no, actually, before I came back to Earth, I went to this other planet. There was this gal there called Princess Layla, and she fed me as much delicious stuff as I could eat. I wonder why Goku never told Chi Chi about this. Anyway, let's continue. It was really yummy. When I was full, I fell asleep right there. But when I came to, the feast and Princess Layla were gone. On top of that, I had overslept and ended up arriving later than Frieza. So now we know why Goku was late in Dragon Ball Z. Anyway, this is how Layla got Goku's genetic information to create Zykor. During the conversation between Gohan and Vegeta, Boma arrives. She's in a capsule corp ship above them and she says, thank goodness, looks like everyone's still alive. With her on the ship are Pan, Videl, and Bra. They manage to revive Trunks, but Goten still needs to rest. Boma says, so that monster will come out again in a month. If only Son Goku was here at a time like this. This annoys Vegeta. He says, why don't you give it a rest? Just how long do you intend to rely on Kakarot? This is where the old Kai jumps into the conversation again, telepathically communicating with everyone on the ship. He says, hey, son Gohan, I think that in the end, we've got no choice but to get some help from Goku. Gohan responds and says, do you know where he is? Old Kai says, well, we do know technically, but everyone is excited. Where is he now, says Gohan. The old Kai responds and says, he's in a place called Ryo Shin Realm. To put it simply, it's a world where the Shenrons live. Boma responds and says, but wasn't Shenlong created by God? Here she's talking about the God of Earth, who is now Dende, but originally it was Kami. The old Kai responds to her saying, to be precise, he wasn't created. Rather, 
he was called forth from the Ryoshin realm. And I just want to pause here for a second because this is actually a big deal. It makes a lot of sense to me that a series called Dragon Ball, where the main characters can summon dragons that grant almost any wish, it feels like that series should include a place where these dragons live. Yes, this manga isn't canon, but it was written by Toyotaro, who is currently working with Akira Toriyama, creating the new canon Dragon Ball Super manga. So I won't be surprised if we see some of these ideas leak into the official Dragon Ball Super story. Now, this idea about the dragons not being created by the person who created the Dragon Balls actually makes quite a bit of sense. The Dragon Balls are like the Ender Eyes from Minecraft. You collect them to open a portal to another world. I hope you guys appreciate the Minecraft reference, just putting that out there. But no, seriously, the Dragon Balls allow you to summon the dragon from the Rio Shin realm. Let's just call it the dragon realm now, which is a pre-existing place where all the dragons live. The reason I'm talking about this for a little bit is because if this idea gets slipped into Dragon Ball Super, it'll mean that Super Shenron was that giant golden dragon who is so powerful he can undo what even Zeno the Omni King has done. Super Shenron is likely the most powerful dragon in the dragon realm and it's just mind-blowing to think that he may exist independent of the giant dragon balls that zalama created to summon him into the physical world i think this is a super cool and mind-blowing idea but as of right now none of it is canon so let's keep going with the story gohan says i see so in other words the namikians possess the power to summon shenron from the real shin realm old kai responds by saying right well originally the dragons were unable to leave the Ryoshin realm. In order to call them forth, the Dragon Balls and a Dragon model are needed. However, when the evil dragons were born, that model was destroyed, meaning that Shenron lost his physical presence in that world. Having lost his presence, Shenron couldn't return to the Ryoshin realm. He needed a vessel to do that. And this is where Vegeta pieces it together saying, I get it. So then Shenron's spirit entered into Kakarot. I want to pause here for one quick second because this is really cool. I wish this was explained as it is here in the end of Dragon Ball GT. It would have all made so much more sense seeing Goku fly off with Shenron. But let's keep going. Pan says, so that's what's happened. And the Olkai responds, yeah, pretty much Goku has become one with Shenron and has gone to the real Shin realm. Then let's just summon him, says Trunks. It won't be that simple, said the old Kai. The real Shin realm is a special world. It's seal off so people cannot easily come and go between the outside world. Videl jumps in and reiterates Trunks' point from earlier. She says, so isn't there a way for us to summon him? The old Kai responds again saying, the Dragon Balls are the only way to call forth those in the real Shin realm. What's become of the ones on earth? I'm pretty sure that they're at Dinde's palace still in stone form, said Gohan. I figured, said the old Kai. The Dragon Balls may have been purged of their negative energy, but they still haven't gathered enough energy to be used again. It will most likely be a thousand years before those Dragon Balls will be usable once more. Pan chimes in again and says, so we can't do anything if they're just stones. The Okai follows up and says, actually, there is a method by which we could immediately revive the Dragon Balls. If each of the seven Dragon Balls are simultaneously infused with powerful light power, then the Dragon Balls will regain their light. Light power? What's that, said Trunks? It's a powerful light energy only capable of being produced by a few select races really seen in the universe a unique gifted race where are they then this race of light that would be you said the old kai the saiyans everyone's shocked until trunk says oh do you mean super saiyans that's right said the old kai when seven super saiyans simultaneously infuse the seven balls with light the dragon balls will be revived what is that true so all we have to do is infuse the dragon balls with power all right there's some hope now says gohan trunks jumps in and says actually it's hopeless there's only six saiyans on earth now i want to jump in here for a quick second and point out how similar this situation is to the super saiyan god ritual from dragon ball super all of a sudden the most important thing is this new power from a specific amount of super saiyans 
even down to the problem of them being one Saiyan short. I think there's almost no denying that Toyotaro influenced this idea being brought into the canon. Let's keep going. A few days later, in the real Shin realm, Goku and Paikon are taken to see Omega Shenron. Now that we understand more about this realm, it makes sense that Omega Shenron also lives here, alongside all the other dragons that we've ever seen summoned from Dragon Ball all the way up to Dragon Ball GT. Omega Shenron explains the situation to Goku. Goku. Goku says, so what should I do then? Is there anything I can do? During their conversation, Omega Shenron notices that Purunga has headed out to the lower world. Purunga is the dragon of Namek, the one that appears when you use the Namekian Dragon Balls. Goku and Paikon ask, what does this mean? And Omega Shenron responds, most likely the people of Earth are behind this. The panel below tells us exactly what's going on. We're taken to planet Namek, and it reads, in order to give their wishes to Purunga, Trunks and Goten visited new planet Namek. Their first wish was to heal the damaged earth. The second wish was to revive those who had been killed, which amazingly included Kabito Kai. And for their third wish, Trunks had an idea. He wanted to revive a Saiyan, a Super Saiyan, that many of us may have already forgotten about. Can you guys guess who that is? Trunks uses his final wish to revive none other then Broly. The story continues with Broly being resurrected on Earth and confronted by Vegeta. Hmm, Broly, so it really is you. Vegeta, is this the living world? I wanna pause right here for a second and ask, what do you guys think happens to Broly's body when he dies? Remember that in the Dragon Ball mythos, only great, good warriors get to keep their bodies in the afterworld. In Dragon Ball Super, we've seen villains like Frieza keep their bodies, but that was only for the purpose of punishment. He was essentially being punished for an eternity. Broly, on the other hand, this version of Broly, has never really been a bad guy. He's just sort of been manipulated and misguided. So what do you guys believe? Does Broly get to keep his body in the other world after he dies? Anyway, let's continue. Of course it is, Vegeta responds. Immediately, Broly begins to snap as he remembers how he was killed by Gohan, Trunks, and Goten. Vegeta notices this and says, so your memories of when you were killed are resurfacing, huh? Broly transforms and dashes at Vegeta. Vegeta also transforms to a Super Saiyan preparing for the clash, when suddenly Goten's rushes between them. Wait a minute, he says. Broly, stop. Who are you? said Broly. Obviously, this Broly isn't aware of fusion because this is something that was introduced to the series after he was killed. Don't interfere, said Broly, and he attacks Goten. However, in an instant, Goten becomes Super Saiyan 3, and he begins to easily deal with all of Broly's attacks. He then uses an ability called Galactic Donut to suppress Broly, and snarkily says, it's just a bit too early for you to oppose me. It's really insane to see Broly in this situation, because before, every time Broly showed up. He was a serious threat. He was as close to unstoppable as it gets, smashing faces into walls, defeating multiple opponents that were supposed to be as strong or stronger than he is. But so much time has passed and the Z-Warriors have gotten so much stronger that it's just not realistic for this version of Broly to be able to keep up. Now, modern day Broly is a different story, but let's keep going. Gotenks and Vegeta subdue Broly and take him back to Capsule Corp, where he is being suppressed by what I could only assume is some of Bulma's technology. I'm assuming that because if this was regular metal, Broly would be able to just rip through it, even in his base form. Anyway, he is being watched over by Bra, Vegeta's daughter. She offers him some food and says, you're a Saiyan too, so you must be a real pig. Be a good boy and eat. Suddenly, Broly manages to escape the shackles on his arm and grabs Bra's leg. I'll kill you, he says. Although she was obviously surprised, with a stern look on her face, Bra says, I'll tell you right now, the era when you were the strongest is long over. She touches a button on the console suppressing Broly, which sends a powerful shock all through Broly's body. I think it's easy to see the obvious parallels here between this situation and new Broly since that shock collar that Paragus used to control Broly's power is such a big part of his lore. In the legendary Super Saiyan movie where Broly was first introduced, it was not a shock collar, it was a mind control device. But the way Broly's power is controlled has been reimagined and this scene right here may have been where it started since Toyotaro, the person who created this manga, 
Kamiya is the same person working on the official Dragon Ball story at the moment. Anyway, let's keep going. Broad then continues to say, nowadays, anyone who's a Saiyan can become a Super Saiyan. You've got no choice but to listen to what we say. The story then flashes to the other world, where Omega Shenlong is still talking to Goku. He says, it looks like a Super Saiyan from the past has been resurrected through Purunga's power. A Super Saiyan from the past? Why they do that? Asked Goku. Those on Earth are trying one method to revive the Dragon Balls. This holds for all seven of us dragons and you, Goku, since we're all residents of the Ryushin realm. But there is one person here who isn't a resident of the Ryushin realm. Oh? Said Goku. This is where the group figures out that Paikon, Goku's sparring partner, isn't a resident of the Ryushin realm and thus the rules of the Ryushin realm may not necessarily apply to him. Back on Earth, Broly is having a dream about his father Paragus. In the dream, his father says, Listen to me, Broly. You must despise the royal family who sent us into exile, as well as other Saiyans except you and me. Broly then remembers his fight with Goku which sends him into a rage. Kakarot, he yells, as he transforms, breaking the shackles that were meant to subdue him. At the same time, Bulma runs into the room. Broly charges at her, and then suddenly, Vegeta is between them. Broly, he said, you want to kill me, right? Well then, become stronger. The way you are now, you can't kill me or even Trunks. Broly snatches his hand away from Vegeta, who was stopping him from reaching Bulma. He then opens his hand in Vegeta's face, preparing to fire a key blast. Come on, said Vegeta. Finally realizing the situation he's in, Broly instead turns his hand and shoots a key blast, tearing a hole in the side of Capsule Corp. He says, Vegeta, I'll kill you no matter what. Vegeta says, just try it, and then Broly flies off. Right then, Trunks rushes into the room. Dad, he said, don't tell me you let that Broly get away. We need him to revive Goku. Vegeta responds and says, how many times do I have to tell you? We don't need Kakarot. I'll take care of that bastard, Zykor. Dad, this is no time to say that, said Trunks. It's all right. Just come on, Trunks. We're heading to the gravity room, responds Vegeta. After flying off, Broly lands atop a tall building overlooking a city. He's watching as other kids interact with their fathers, while simultaneously having thoughts of his own father. Don't think, Paragus says to him. Abandon all thought, Broly. Please stop, Dad, said Broly, grabbing his head as he raises his hand towards the city below him. He's getting ready to fire a key blast and destroy it all. Moments away from this, he hears a voice behind him. So you're Broly, huh, said the voice. Broly turns around. Who the hell are you, he said. It's Pycon, and he responds by saying, well, it's a long story. Don't give me that crap, said Broly. Why are you here? Pycon responds by saying, simply put, I am here to persuade you. What? Said Broly. Pycon continues, we're sorry to bring you back from the dead like this, but you've got to help us revive Son Goku. Son Goku? You mean Kakarot? Kakarot is no longer in this world? That's right, said Pycon. And then Broly begins a thunderous laugh. He says, so Kakarot is dead, is he? That means I just have to kill Vegeta and I'll be the number one Saiyan. Pycon responds and says, no, the thing is, something terrible has happened. So you've got to cooperate with us. We need you to revive Son Goku, revive Kakarot. Did you really think I'll help you do that, said Broly? Well, we didn't think that you'd be easy to convince said Pycon. I don't understand how I've been brought back, but I'm doing things my way, responded Broly. First, I'll kill all these annoying earthlings. Pycon then responds and says, all right, kill as much as you want after you defeat me. Confident, aren't you, said Broly, who instantly transforms and charges at Pycon. Pycon very quickly moves out of Broly's way and says, let's change locations, simultaneously dodging a kick from Broly while grabbing his leg and tossing him for what seems to be miles. Broly is unbelievably upset, and when they land, Pycon asks, Why so frustrated? Is it hatred for Goku or jealousy of Vegeta? Shut up, respond Broly. Why do you hate your fellow Saiyans? said Pycon. Broly powers up and sends a flurry of attack. Pycon casually dodges while saying, Try asking yourself, what's the source of your frustration? Shut up, said Broly. You know, don't you? said Pycon. 
as he knocks Broly to the ground. Again, Broly yells, shut up, as he attacks PyCon directly to the face. Open up, Broly, said PyCon as he caught the attack. On the next panel, Broly has fought PyCon to exhaustion. He's laying on his back while PyCon sits casually a few feet away from him. Where is Kakarot right now? He asks. Training in the heavenly realm, respond PyCon. Is he stronger than you? Yeah, vastly stronger. Respond PyCon again. I see. I'm only interested in fighting, said Broly. I'll surpass Kakarot and Vegeta, and then I'll kill them with my own hands. Is that so, said PyCon. My goal won't change, said Broly. At this point, the story flashes over to Goten and Trunks, who are training in the gravity room. It lets us know that there is about one month left until Zykor breaks free of the Z-Sword. Goten and Trunks are training their hardest. Next to them, so is Vegeta, who is in a deep meditation. Even Pan and Bra are giving it their all. For the first time, the story flashes to Krillin, who's aged quite a bit. Krillin decides that he's going to train as well for the sake of protecting his family. He begins sparring with his wife, Android 18. Even Broly seemed to have put his rage aside and is training to accomplish his goal of becoming stronger than Goku and Vegeta under the supervision of PyCon. Over in the Ryushin realm, Goku is training with Omega Shenron. As onlookers, the other dragons are having a discussion. Purunga says, the day of resurrection is definitely at hand. All the conditions have been met. Now we only have to wait. But there is one thing I can say for sure. If you all lose to Zykor, the living world, the afterlife, hell, heaven, the Kaioshin realm, the dark demon realm, and even the Ryushin realm will be no more. And so, one month passed by. We are taken to the location of the Z-Sword, moments before it's expected for Zykor to break free. The sword is being protected by Hercule, who is given orders to some military men. The men just inform him that they have finished evacuating the army. Hercule responds and says, you better evacuate soon too, and tell the media that evil will never prevail as long as Mr. Satan's around. Not too far off, Trunks and Vegeta are standing, looking at the sword. It's finally time, said Vegeta, as a long crack appears in the sword. Behind them, Krillin arrives. Hey, haven't seen you two in a while, said Krillin. Why'd you bother showing up, respond Vegeta. Well, I figured I'll come in handy in a pinch. There's always the Destructo disc, I guess. Forget it, said Vegeta. I'll be fine on my own. Krillin tells Trunks, Hey, Vegeta's really roaring to go, isn't he? Trunks responds, Yes. He trained quite a bit. Then Krillin notices the length of Trunks' hair and says, In just one month? Say, when did your hair grow so long? Trunks responds and says, Grandpa built a training room that regulates the flow of time. Like the room of spirit and time, asked Krillin. That's right, said Trunks. I went in for a year, but father trained for five years. Just then, the sword snapped. Enough talk, said Vegeta. Here he comes. Get out here, Zykor, yelled Vegeta. The hilt of the sword spiraled over their heads, and the three Z warriors stood in amazement, shocked. What a storm of key, said Krillin. Some distance away, Oob senses it and says, so he's finally revived. With a furious look on his face, Zykor crushes the remaining half of the Z-Sword. He stands and says, you'll all pay for this, you miserable insects. In order to continue with this story, I have to share some real world events regarding Zykor. After this chapter that we just finished together, the creator Toivo was hired to work with Akira Toriyama to create the official Dragon Ball Super manga. Because of that, the story continues in two ways. In the first way, Toibo returns and tries to quickly wrap things up. And the second way are leaks of the next few chapters that Toibo had already created drafts for to progress the story. So what we're going to go into right now is the quick way Toibo attempted to wrap up the story. And then right after that, will go through the draft chapters with the actual story progression. Let's go. We are taken far into the future, about a hundred years. Master Roshi is still alive and he is recounting the events of this battle with Zykor to Goku Jr. and Vegeta Jr. The two are there under the supervision of Pan who is an old lady at this point, over a hundred years old. Master Roshi then tells them, symbolically, the sun is setting and we better leave the story here for today. Goku Jr. and Vegeta Jr. are appalled. Wait a minute, they said. I want to know the rest. Grandpa hasn't even appeared yet. Grandpa being Goku. Their reaction here is obviously meant to symbolize how we feel about the Zykor story. 
Master Roshi responds and says, Sorry, telling that story really wore me out. Go easy on me. I'm old. The kids decide to give Master Roshi a break. And as they're getting ready to head home, we get hit with a little bit of comedy. A couple of new villains show up. Bibidi, son of Babidi, and Majin Poo. They're apparently going to tear the planet apart. Kid Goku and Vegeta are able to easily take care of them. And seeing this puts a smile on Pan's and Master Roshi's face. Seeing how capable this new generation is made Master Roshi realize that finally, maybe his job was done. And with that, the old hermit, who at this point is well over 400 years old, closes his eyes and allows himself to collapse. Master Roshi dies. But it isn't a completely sad story. Remember at the beginning of the video, I asked you if you think Broly gets to keep his body. And I also mentioned that some villains like Frieza were allowed to keep their bodies to suffer eternal punishment. It seems as if Master Roshi was allowed to keep his body, but not for punishment. He wakes up and he's surrounded by all the people whose lives he's touched in his centuries of being alive. They're all congratulating him on a job well done and thanking him for all his hard work and tutelage. People like Tien, Yamcha, Chao Su, Chi Chi, Grandpa Gohan, and of course a young Krillin and the man himself, Goku, all thanking Master Roshi. At the very end of the chapter, we get a message from Toibul Toyotaro himself. He apologizes for not being able to finish the series and said he threw this chapter together out of desperation. He also says, that he'll continue to work diligently, implying that this whole story is very close to him and it's something that he himself wants to see done. Okay, so now we're going to continue with the chapters that were leaked. Damn it, Zyko has just managed to break out of the Z-Sword, a near impossible task, but for him, it took one month. Trunks, Vegeta, and Krillin are there, ready for his arrival. Even after knowing what to expect, the trio are still impressed by Zykor's immense key. Vegeta, however, has a new look of resolve. Remember that for Zykor, one month has passed since he's been trapped in the sword. But in that time, using technology developed by his grandfather, Trunks managed to train for one year. Vegeta, on the other hand, trained for five years. So this Vegeta is five years of hard training stronger than the one Zykor fought one month ago. Krillin says, I may not be trembling, but I probably ought to be. That key is enormous, right Vegeta? Krillin glances to the side and notice Vegeta is missing. Instantly, Vegeta is face to face with Zykor. You're finally awake. What was it like to sleep inside that filthy sword? Well, asked Vegeta. Zykor is confused. He looks at Vegeta saying, are you still planning to fight me? That's right, respond Vegeta. Got a problem with that? Zyko responds, is this the pride of the royal family? How pathetic. Again, the reason why Zyko is confused here is because he is completely unaware that Vegeta is now five years stronger. This is going to feel good, Vegeta says, as he powers up into Super Saiyan. With his typical condescension, Zyko raises his hand towards Vegeta and says, how about I wipe you out? in an instant. Putting you out of your misery is the least I can do. And then Vegeta disappears. He is instantly behind Zykor. Zykor is barely able to keep up with Vegeta's speed initially. He throws a punch that Vegeta easily dodges. The punch leaves Zykor open. Vegeta then feigns a key blast, realizing that he's just been speed blitzed by Vegeta and that he's now wide open. For a full attack, Zykor backs up, preparing himself for Vegeta's key blast. And then Vegeta laughs. This infuriates Zykor. Off to the side, Krillin is confused. Just a month ago, this fight looked completely different. Vegeta stood absolutely no chance. Krillin sort of mumbles to himself, what the, what did you do, Vegeta? Vegeta continues the assault. Still in his Super Saiyan form, he charges at Zykor, then stops mid-air and fires off a barrage of key blasts. Both Krillin and Trunks need to leap out of the way as Zykor blocks the blast with one hand. And then, again, instantly, Vegeta is behind him. Over here, he says, simpleton, and then kicks Zykor in his back. Zykor attempts to counter Vegeta with a punch that Vegeta dodges and successfully counters with a punch of his own. Zykor and Vegeta clash, and Vegeta manages to blast Zykor away. Off to the side, Krillin and Trunks are both confused. 
Krillin says, what's going on here? Zygor got pushed back even though Vegeta's key is much smaller. I mean, he's a normal Super Saiyan, right? Why isn't he transforming into a stronger Super Saiyan? Trunks responds, no, it's something else. Outrageous, Trunks says, becoming a Super Saiyan. At the same time, Zygor is beginning to stand up. What are you doing? He says to Vegeta. You guys have probably noticed the art is becoming less and less digitized. From this point on, all we have are the original sketches from Toyable, pencil sketches, which is kind of cool. This is pretty rare stuff. The story continues, however, with the conversation between Vegeta and Zykor happening simultaneously with the conversation between Trunks and Krillin. Zykor says to Vegeta, you're doing something different, aren't you? Vegeta laughs and says to Zykor, during my training, I finally realized a technique to kill you. Hearing this, Krillin says to Trunks, what's he talking about? Perhaps he figured out how to ascend to something beyond a Super Saiyan 4? Is that what you think, Trunks? Trunks responds, no, that's not it. At first, my dad also searched for a technique to transform beyond Super Saiyan 4. We flash back over to Zyko, who is still talking to Vegeta, responding to Vegeta saying he found a technique to kill him. Zykor says, a technique to kill me. If something like that exists, I'd like you to teach it to me. Vegeta responds and says, I've exceeded you in power and speed, and I've obtained stamina. Zykor is laughing at this point. He says, power that surpasses mine? What kind of trick are you trying to pull? Don't you get it? I'll teach you the basics. I also want to point out for a second here how in these original sketches, how much like Goku, Zykor looks. The horns are missing off his chin. And it's pretty much Goku's face. His hair is just slightly different. Anyway, let's continue. Zykor says, I am the ultimate physical specimen. My power is unparalleled. Vegeta responds, that is the utmost load of nonsense. And fires a key blast at Zykor. We see the explosion from Vegeta's blast from Trunks and Krillin's perspective while they're continuing their conversation. Trunks says, in the beginning, he kept transforming, but surpassing to a new level was too much of a strain. I just want to point out here, guys, that the translation may not be perfect. This is incredibly rare in itself, not only to have the original art, but to have it where someone put in the painstaking hours of translating or trying to translate all this text. So some of it is a tiny bit off, but it's still an excellent job. Anyway, let's continue. For a Super Saiyan to sustain balance, the limit is four. That is what dad realized. I don't see what you're saying. What are you saying about how Vegeta is fighting? said Krillin to Trunks. We flash back over to the fight between Vegeta and Zykor, with Trunks explaining what's happening. He says, Among the Super Saiyans, there are three distinguished types. Super Saiyan 4 fundamentally differs from the kind of Super Saiyans up to that point. The one that exhausts the physical strength and specializes in an intense rate of speed is Super Saiyan 3. And for one of the first times, we see Vegeta transform to his Super Saiyan 3 transformation. He uses it in a flash for its speed, which allows him to dodge one of Zykor's attacks. Trunks continues, and the one that specializes in stamina and energy is Super Saiyan 4. And in the panel next to him, we see Vegeta transform into Super Saiyan 4 while receiving one of Zykor's attacks. This is so dope. I can't wait to talk about this in a second, but let's just keep going for now. Ah, no way, says Krillin. He found a way to utilize those transformations. And then we get a panel of Vegeta in three various stages of Super Saiyan zipping around Zykor. Trunks says, yeah, he's fighting by alternating transformations instantaneously. Even Zykor, who is excessively fast, hasn't noticed. Okay, let's stop here for a second, because this is groundbreaking. This is amazing for so many reasons. So just hear me out for one second. First of all, in the current canon of Dragon Ball Super, one of the issues, in my opinion, is that strategy is kind of out the window. It's all about who has a bigger power level. And so because usually with a new transformation comes an increase in power, every transformation makes its predecessor obsolete. And that's a little bit of a bummer because Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 2 and 3, and even Super Saiyan God, these are all really cool transformations. Personally, my favorite and one that I wish we saw more was Super Saiyan 3. But there's absolutely no reason for Goku to use this now that he has Super Saiyan Blue and Ultra Instinct. 
They tried a little bit in the Tournament of Power to have Goku go through his transformations as he regained his energy. But something like what Toyable just did with Vegeta would be insane in the canon of Dragon Ball Super. It would give all the Super Saiyan transformation their own relevance again. And guys, remember that this is the same guy working on the official manga right now. These ideas have to be bouncing around in his head. Let's keep going though, because we're not done. Trunk says, but there's the one that's been detrimental to the transformations. The one that kills your speed but specializes in power. The same type of transformation as Broly. And for an instant, Vegeta transforms into his berserker form. Oh my gosh, this is insane guys. He manages to knock Zykor away. Zykor says, I get it, I understand. You've been sneakily transforming. Vegeta responds, that's right and charges at Zykor again. There's another panel of Zykor receiving attacks from Vegeta's different forms. Krillin says, who knew you could fight like that? Trunks responds, you know my father is a fighting genius. If there's a weak point, it's only natural for him to try and overcome it. Even so, dad's strength is that he trained so diligently. There are three different types and one must train for each of them separately. The third level and higher takes time and hard work. What's not natural is thinking of something like this. And we get this beautiful panel of all the Super Saiyan transformations and this max version of them that Vegeta has now mastered. At this rate, your fate will soon be in my hands, Vegeta says to Zykor. And then Zykor begins to laugh. Is something funny? Asked Vegeta. No, no. You use the transformation of the three types separately. That's burdensome, isn't it? Zykor continues, well then let me ask you this. Which transformation is mine? Vegeta looks puzzled. Zykor continues, whichever one you use, I have no weak points. You could even call my transformation the perfect type. What are you trying to say? Vegeta asks. Zykor responds, how many times are you going to make me say it? There's no one who can defeat me. What if I was what you always wanted to become, Vegeta? What I'm saying is, I'm going to show you the overwhelming power that gives nightmares to even gods. You're concealing your true power. Is that what you're trying to say? Vegeta asks. I'm not hiding anything, said Zykor. I'm in control. What do you mean? Vegeta continues. I'm dangerous if I transform. Everything will be destroyed transform did he say transform trunks and krillin are shocked mother please permit me the transformation mother zykor doesn't realize that his mom is now dead vegeta smirks and says your mommy was killed by kabito kai what did you say said zykor vegeta responds you're a pretty careless guy and then zykor says the one i was protecting is already gone i will relish in your despair you're going to regret having been born and then he begins to transform. Zykor's power begins to shake the entire planet, decimating the area where Vegeta, Krillin, and Trunks stood. Krillin says, unreal, if he's been concealing his power up until now, then that means I've never seen anything like this. His key is so enormous, I can't fathom the power. As a quick side note, I wonder if this is where the idea in Dragon Ball Super where God key cannot be sensed comes from. It's like the power is so beyond anything else that the senses of a mortal just can't perceive it. Anyway, Krillin says to Vegeta, hey Vegeta, what should we do? We're going to be okay, right? Vegeta looks worried and says, you gotta be kidding me. Can I endure this? And then immediately he's attacked by Zykor. A simple push sends Vegeta flying. Trunks and Krillin yell, but before Vegeta could react, Zykor is instantly behind him, grabbing him by the back of his head. He then begins to repeatedly smash Vegeta's face into the ground, till what looks like right before Vegeta loses consciousness. Then he tosses him away. Trunks and Krillin rush to Vegeta's side. Are you alright Vegeta? said Krillin. Vegeta responds, I completely misread him. And this is where we get the first full look of the new transformed Zykor. He says, is this the body that you wanted? Perfect in every way. To borrow an expression from you guys, this is Super Saiyan 5. Zykor is amused by the whole situation and then says, all right, that's enough. Farewell to you pieces of garbage. Trunks transforms to Super Saiyan 3, which is pretty dope. This will be one of the first time we've ever seen Super Saiyan 3 from Trunks. Zykor doesn't seem to care though. He says, 
disappear. And in that instant, he is suddenly attacked from behind. It's Broly. Couple things here. The first thing is, I think this panel with with the side of Zykor's face and then Broly's foot. I just think this is hilarious. I don't know why. The second thing is, how cool is it to see Broly defending the Z Warriors? Everyone wants to see Broly for Nakama. You know what? I shouldn't say everyone. I want to see this scene so bad where Broly has to fight alongside. Goku and Vegeta for something. So it's pretty dope that we get this hair from the guy who is currently working on the official Dragon Ball Super manga. These are the kind of thoughts that's also in his head. Anyway, let's keep going. Broly kicks Zykor away. He glances back at the Z-Warriors while Zykor readies for an attack. To everyone's surprise, instead of continuing his attack on Zykor, Broly then turns around and charges at Vegeta. He grabs Vegeta by the neck and says, what are you doing Vegeta? I'm supposed to be the one who kills you. He then tosses Vegeta aside like a ragdoll. While this is happening, Oob shows up. And remember, in this timeline, Oob is already trained by Goku. This is the first time Oob has seen Zykor, and he says, are you Zykor? Oob then turns to the Z Warriors and says, everyone, leave it up to me now. You all need to hurry to Kami's lookout. At first I was thinking there's no way Oob is this strong and regardless of how strong he was it didn't make sense for him to show up at this point and be a significant threat to Zykor. Considering Zykor had already destroyed half the planet it's sort of like what have you been doing the whole time? But then I realized Oob's plan is to buy time. Buy time for what? For all the Saiyans to go help resurrect Goku. Broly says, Kami's lookout. And then Trunks says to Broly, please help work with us to bring Goku back. Have your confrontation with my father later. Revive Kakarot? Broly responds. Then he says, okay, I'll give it a shot. Just how strong has he gotten? I guess Pycon did his job while training Broly, or at least inspired him to want to beat Goku at his full strength. So like that, Broly has agreed to help resurrect Goku. Zykor, and Zykor is funny, man. But Zykor says, what's this? Just when I think the insects are multiplying so quickly, they're all discussing running away. There will be no escape. Everyone, hurry, said Oob. So naive, Zykor says as he prepares a key blast. Then suddenly, behind him, someone yells, Hold it! Zykor turns around. Who is it this time? It's Tien. He says, If you want to chase after them, you're gonna have to go through me. You know, I love this. I love when all the characters, all the Z Warriors get to get involved in a fight. Even though clearly Tien can't really do anything to Zykor, the fact that he gets this moment, I think is pretty cool. Let's keep going. Zykor turns around and looks at Tien, realizing that Tien is going to be one-shotted and killed instantly. Krillin starts to freak out. He says, that idiot, and then charges in between Zykor and Tien. Fair warning, the next few panels aren't fully drawn. Remember, we're in full draft mode. This is as far as Toyotaro got with these pages. So. It looks like both Oob and Krillin charge to try and save Tien's life. Krillin gets there first between the two and says to Zykor, your fight's not with this guy. Don't pay him any attention. Zykor then one-shots Krillin, sending him flying towards Tien. Zykor then turns to Oob and says, was this your great plan to escape? What is it that the Saiyans are gathering up in the skies for? Are they preparing to run away from the whole universe? I love the mention of potentially leaving the universe here. I wonder if this is the origin of the multiverse we saw introduced in Dragon Ball Super. Because before this, we had no idea that other universes existed. Anyway, Oob responds, we have a strategy up our sleeve. Zykor says, hey, all right. How should I kill you? Then to Zykor's own surprise, he powers down. He says, huh? And Oob responds with a smile saying, it appears you can't hold that form for long. Zykor says back to him, the way I am now is enough to handle the likes of someone like you. Now, I really like this. Usually, Goku and Vegeta get a new form and there's always some sort of drawback to stop the form from being too overpowered. But when the bad guys power up, usually it's like different rules apply. To see that Zykor's transformation had this drawback, I thought was really dope because it's obvious foreshadowing that Toyotaro planned for it to show up again in a major way. But let's continue. Oob begins to power up. We then flash to Kami's lookout. 
the Saiyans have arrived. Here, Gohan, Goten, Pan, Bra, and Dinde were all waiting for them. It looks like Dinde heals Vegeta, who is still reluctant to resurrect Goku. Vegeta says, pointless trying something like this. Dinde then yells, everyone grab a dragon ball trunks being forever a peacekeeper hands a ball to his dad vegeta who snatches it he then turns to broly and says broly you too broly takes the ball but says this is the only time i will ever work with you then holding their dragon ball respectively all the saiyans begin to power up to their super saiyan forms Dinde yells to everyone, okay, focus your energy into the Dragon Ball. And we get this panel which is so reminiscent of the Super Saiyan God transformation. I just feel like considering that Toyotaro worked on both of these things, there's just no way the Super Saiyan God ritual requiring righteous Saiyans to be in a circle was not influenced by this panel. But the Dragon Balls didn't seem to be responding. Gohan says, it's no good. The light's not stable. Then they all hear a voice. It's the Grand Kai. He yells, What are you doing? Grand Kai? Says Gohan. The Kai says, For this to work, the size of your energy needs to be exactly the same. He continues, It's the same principle as the fusion you guys do so much of. Concentrate your energy. Then everyone begins to focus again. Vegeta says, They say you've become so strong, Kakarot. Resurrect already and show yourself before me. The sketches are gonna get a little wonky again, but I'm sure we can handle it. It looks like their efforts finally work. Goten says, the Dragon Balls came back to life. In the Ryushin realm, Goku is talking to Omega Shenron, who says to him, we're almost out of time. It's been a long time since you left Earth, hasn't it? Goku responds, that's right. At the same time, Dende begins to summon Shenron. He says, arise, eternal dragon. In the Ryushin realm, Omega Shenron says, We've been summoned. Let's go. And Goku begins to smile. Omega Shenron pops out of the Dragon Balls. And this panel is so dope. Everyone who's currently in the realm of the Kais is aware of what's happening. Because remember, Zykor was pretty much going to destroy everything. All of these realms would have fallen to Zykor's power. So everyone really wants Goku to win. We get a few panels of everyone cheering Goku on as he traveled with Omega Shenron to be summoned back to Earth. The Kais are all smiling. Go, Goku, one of them say. Piccolo, who's in hell, looks to the sky and says, Goku? King Kai and the others all yell, Go get him, Goku. Even Paikon, with a smile on his face, says, Good luck, Goku. Shenron appears, and Dende says, Yes, it worked. Then, above him, someone else begins to manifest. The panel starts with his boot that eventually floats down and taps on the ground. Goku lands in front of the Z-Warriors. He says, what's up guys, long time no see. There's an uproar of emotion. Everyone is excited. Even Vegeta has a smile on his face. Pan rushes towards Goku and Goku says to her, I know about the situation. The one star dragon told me, everyone, thank you for bringing me back. Broly powers down and says, Kakarot? Goku looks in Vegeta's and Broly direction and says, Broly and Vegeta. I can't thank you guys enough. Broly responds to him saying, don't misunderstand. This was just a way for me to kill you. Goku says, is that right? Vegeta cuts in saying, Kakara, if you know the situation, then you know we don't have time for your idle chit chat. Goku turns to him and says, ah, you're right. And guys, unfortunately, this is where Toyotaro's drafts regarding the Zyko story ends. Now, plenty of other people have picked up the story, most notably Reiji from YouTube created a two and a half minute animation where Goku arrives at the battlefield and ascends to Super Saiyan 5. I'll link that in the description. There are also other channels that have attempted to animate parts of the Zykor versus Goku fight. But as far as the story from the original creator, it ends here. Still though, as I mentioned many times throughout this video, the creator of this story Toybull, also known as Toyotaro, is the same person working on the official story of Dragon Ball Super currently. And because of that, we've already seen many of the ideas from these Zykor chapters make it into the official canon Dragon Ball Super story. If you made it this far in the video, hashtag Zykor forever in the comments below. Guys, that's it. This is officially the longest video I've ever uploaded to the channel. So thank you guys for getting through all of it. Much love, hashtag do crew. I want you to do me a favor, have yourself a great day. Bye.